Okay, zero technical problems today, everyone, in the I Love Jeet Kune Do world. Uh, welcome, this is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, and this is uh, broadcast episode number 32, I think it is. Yes, so this is the one um, about uh, Jeet Kune Do, evolution, uh, stagnation, evolution, or devolution. The, um, the genesis of today's, um, today's broadcast came from uh, my experience um, last week. Last weekend I was down in, uh, in Barbados, so I was back home in Barbados. And, um, uh, you know, I don't know how it is with you, but when, when you get back to the land of, uh, not my birth, but where I grew up, um, it, it thing, things you, you tend to relax a lot more than, um, than than you might normally, right? And so the difference between being in in, in Barbados with the the fresh air and the, the natural sunlight and and uh, and the openness and and what have you is is a little bit different from being here in the U.S. You know, the land of political correctness and where you got to be careful about what you say and who you say it to and how you say it. Right. So anyhow, so 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 we're down in Barbados, right? And um, I don't know at what point it was that my student Wayne Quinton. Some of you might remember Wayne from the um, episode one of the Jeet Kune Do dialogues, right? So at some point, Wayne wrote these words on the whiteboard: um, accumulation, absorption, addition. Elimination, right? I didn't see him write them, and I want you to hang on to those words because they'll they'll come back later on in in the broadcast. So keep those four words in mind: accumulation, absorption, addition, elimination. Um, just like last week, I'll have to make a disclaimer on this one. If if I go off on any topic, if I go off on any subject, again, it is just me either giving my opinion posing questions that are designed to make you think and it's not at all about disparaging someone else's approach if it happens to be different from mine right and i'm probably going to say that again before before we finish up today's broadcast so i'm in the land of my youth surrounded by also oh familiar sights right um so okay for the purposes of today's storytelling We'll divide the discussion into three sections, and I'll call them one, the early days, two, um, the now time. So this would be Bruce Lee's now time. For people like us, his followers in Jeet Kune Do, it would be, all, it would be the mid time, and then three, the future years, right? So the early days, what was Jeet Kune Do designed in its initial stages, right? What was it designed um, um, to be and why was it thusly designed? So it's the early 1960s and you're Bruce Lee and you've been studying this Wing Chun style and you find that its emphasis on things like the sticky hands and economical delivery and the simultaneous offense and defense are really useful for you. But then you move to, to America and your horizons expand and um, because of certain encounters, and you realize that the Wing Chun is not 100% relevant anymore. So you modify what you're doing by adding techniques from other systems um, to which you'd had exposure, you know, as well as stuff that you may have picked up since you've been in, in the United States, right? So now we get to the now time, for, for, or the mid time, right? As time goes by and you continue to educate yourself, in, in the martial art, and you begin to formulate the idea of drawing up your own system based on your experiences thus far. So to you, a blend of Wing Chun, boxing, fencing seem to make a lot of sense, right? And you go so far as to, so we're looking at the commentaries book today, because uh, I couldn't find my copy of um, Letters of the Dragon. I don't know, I seem to have misplaced that. but. Um, we do know that Bruce Lee wrote at one point, I'm having a Gung Fu system drawn up. This system is a combination of chiefly Wing Chun, fencing and boxing. As for Gung Fu training, I'll have them written down when it is finished, right? So, but then you have your fight with Wong Jack Man and that changes everything, right? So much so that you lose faith in a lot of what you've invested in um, thus far, 
right? And so a few pages down uh, in the commentaries book, right, uh, Bruce Lee writes again that um, I've lost faith in the Chinese classical arts, though I still call mine Chinese, because basically all styles are products of dry land swimming, even the Wing Chun school, right? Um, you, you, so you end up giving the name Jeet Kune Do to your basic concept, um, but you stress that you have not created a new style, right? So here he says, I stress again, I have not created or invented any kind of martial art. Jeet Kune Do is derived from what I have learned, plus my evaluation on it. Thus, my JKD is not confined by any kind of martial arts. On the contrary, I welcome those who like JKD to study it and improve it. Right? So we've got background and setting and what have you in, um, to the best of my knowledge, Bruce Lee's own, own words. Right? So um, now we, we'll, we'll shift to the future right? um, years for Jeet Kune Do. So I have a, my Facebook friend, uh, Ramon Rodriguez, right? He asked me this a while ago, and I, I, I maybe should have gotten permission from him to publish it, but uh, hopefully I won't get myself in trouble for it, right? So he, he asked me if I thought that it was probable or even possible that in the future, the Jeet Kune Do philosophy will divert from using Bruce Lee's name, his face, and his image as a reference as we've seen occur in other martial art philosophies, right? So then he cites um, the, the art of Te, Okinawan uh, Te, right? Which was conceptualized by Kusanku and taught to his inner circle, right? Comprising of people like Chatan Yara and uh, Kanga Sakugawa. And then they passed it down to a guy named Bushi Matsumura. And Matsumura was the sensei of Gishin Funakoshi. Now, most people might not recognize those four other names that I mentioned, but they might men, uh, recognize the Funukoshi name because he is the founder of Shotokan. And just about every broadcast, I talk about my great love for, for, for Shotokan, right? So here we have a well-established martial art method, right, Shotokan, and very few people can name um, the historical features of it beyond Funakoshi and Waseda University in 1932, right? So um, Ramon's question is, do you think it's probable that the same is likely to happen within the confines of JKD where the images of Dan Asano, um, Taki Kimura, James Lee, um, Bruce Lee himself, right, are replaced by a completely new set of faces in the distant future? And then his question is, what would become of the essence of Jeet Kune Do if we were to lose Bruce Lee as its main reference point? So I told him, I, like Carlos has, has, has mentioned in the comments, I don't see it happening simply because there's, there's enough technology and media representations of Bruce Lee and Jeet Kune Do and Taki Kimura and um, Dan Inosano to keep it alive. Now... That's not to say that there hasn't already been a deterioration or a degeneration in the quality of the Jeet Kune Do history, but you can bet that there will always be people like yours truly with his loud mouth every Wednesday, right, um, doing the, their level best to keep the understanding and the knowledge of the true art out there. But yes, with passage of time, there are always new faces, there are always new generations, right? I mean, so within JKD, we, yes, we have the Bruce Lee image, look at it right there behind me. Um, as I promised uh, last week, I'm working on getting the Dan and Asano image behind me, right? Um, but we've got Tim Tackett, for example, Chris Kent, Cass Magda, uh, Paul Vunak, Burden Richardson, uh, th those, kind, those kinds of people, right? So then Ramon wasn't done with me, so he had a follow-up question. And he says, well, I find it interesting that you mentioned, for example, somebody like Burton Richardson, um, whose lineage links him from Dan Inosano to Conor McGregor in the sport of MMA through Matt Thornton and John Kavanaugh, right? So I, I have a, a basic idea what, what he's talking about in, in that linkage. So his question is, 
will the growth and the expansion of MMA as a concept in modern times lead to the decline of interest in Jeet Kune Do to the point where Jeet Kune Do is simply remembered with some degree of nostalgia, all right? Um, rather than being respected as the perpetually current, evolving, and still very effective martial art concept that it is, which is an, it is an excellent question because to a certain degree, I think it has, right, or will. Or will. Um, I, th I think there is evidence of that um, degeneration already occurring. And that's, what I, and that's um, pretty much what I said to him, that that's what I meant by saying that there has already been a deterioration and a degeneration in the quality. But it's not even just in the quality of the Jeet Kune Do history, right, or attempts to, to maintain the history. It's actually a deterioration and a degeneration in the quality of what is being put out there and passing for, for Jeet Kune Do, right? So I heard um, a horror story from one of the, the uh, from my, 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 um, my Tosin um, uh, Daniel while we were down in Barbados when he was up here in LA, uh, uh, over in LA, and um, he had an experience with some so-called JKD people, right? So um, here, here, let me give you an example, right? So I'm gonna give you a pictorial example again. So this is Sifu Dan's book, Absorb what is useful. Copyright on this thing is 1982. So that's what, 36 years ago, right? So there are 30 pages, right? Dig this. From page 58. So here's page 58, Transcendent Technique, right? So from page 58, 30 pages down to page 88, right? Um, th this Transcendent Technique uh, section you can see where they're analyzing the classical approach, right, to empty hands training, and then how the Jeet Kune Do approach pokes holes in, in the classical approach, right? You, you get that? And then in, um, in page, from page 89 to 101, so that's what, 12 pages, right? Or 22 pages, something, right? 12 pages, something, right? Then they do the same thing for weaponry, right? How the classical approach to weaponry, how the Jeet Kune Do um, concept applied to weapons training, primarily through the Filipino Kali, right? How that pokes holes in the, in the uh, classical approach to weaponry. And the same thing is done for like classic self-defense stuff, you know, right? So that, so I, to me, what that is, right? That's showing you how, there was a thing that we used to talk about in JKD, um, the acquisition of the educated eye, right? So that's showing how the educated eye that one developed from Jeet Kune Do training is applied in, in, to, to the classical approach and then it makes everything um, better, right? Um, <coughs> excuse me, right? Um, wait, let me, let me sip the coffee here for a second because I'm talking too fast. Okay, so here's some personal um, experience of this, right? Um, back in the, in the late 1980s, which was when I came, I came that's, that's when my um, experience with Pendrak Silat, for example, started at the hands of both and, oh, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Wells. I keep forgetting. There we go. Today's um, rendition. And like I told you, I got some, st some new stuff coming in on order because by the time I'm done, everybody's going to know all my shirts, right? So I got some new stuff coming in, right? Okay, so Penjack Silat. So in the late 80s, Sifu Dan and, um, and Cass Magda, um, they showed me how the, um, what they call enter with penetration, right? So the penetrative um, approach to, to, to your entry technique in Penjack Silat. If you take that idea and you cross it over to your, your entry technique and your trapping technique in the Jun Fan or the Wing Chun, it makes for a more effective entry, right? So then, so, so, you, so you, you learn to add more oomph, as I call it, to, to your Jun Fan trapping. Um, then the idea of, I think we've talked about this on, on a previous broadcast, right? So it's the idea of learn the technique, um, put it into the flow, right? Add the counter, add the recounter. When I was exposed to that, I was like, wow, this is incredible stuff. Because 
that idea of adding the counter and adding the recounter, you can spend the rest of your life developing um, training material because you can take one skill. I could take the punching skill and the counter that I add could be from grappling. The recounter could be back to punching. So you take punching, kicking, trapping, grappling, and you, you, you blend all that stuff up. And I guarantee you, you will never run out of material to train that will prepare you for just about any situation that you can encounter. And then of course, because we're JKD people and because we aim to be well-rounded, then we take all of that that we've done for empty hands and then we apply the same concept to our weapons training, right? So then there, there we go, we're, 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 we're training forever. We're training for the rest of our lives, right? So um, Wayne's breakdown, um, so we go back to those four words, right? What Wayne's breakdown is that today in the Jeet Kune Do world, you see sometimes a lot, in some places, right? You see a lot of accumulation of technique, but not so much absorption, right? As in absorb what is useful, right? So there's a lot of accumulation of technique, but not so much absorption. And so we have people adding stuff, you know, like adding different disciplines, right? To, to their curricula, um, because there's not too much elimination or the hacking away of the unessentials, right? So, you know, in this, this discussion about the evolution of Jeet Kune Do, um, I think we have to realize that um, Jeet Kune Do, it's not this autonomous entity that can evolve itself. The evolution is actually up to the practitioners of Jeet Kune Do, right? Students, instructors, and what have you. Um, so it's up to the, the Jeet Kune Do practitioners of, of the world to ensure the continuous evolution of the art. The art cannot do it by, by itself. Right, so it seems as if ultimately we can we can state that there's there's an argument, let's call it, for, for each of the three scenarios. You have Jeet Kune Do stagnating um, with those who do only what Bruce did, right? We have Jeet Kune Do evolving with those who continue to use the art to pursue their own and their students' continued development. And then we have Jeet Kune Do devolving into a fixed entity or a style or an art that's been added to whatever else it is that people are doing. So you get people who, um, you, whether they're legitimately certified or not, but you get people who, well, yeah, we do karate and we do Jeet Kune Do. We do, um, we do uh, jujitsu and we do Jeet Kune Do. And then you have old schoolers like me who are thinking, but wait, your Jeet Kune Do is supposed to come in and affect your jujitsu training, your karate training, your judo training, your whatever. It's not supposed to stay over there separate. I, I swear to you, I swear to you. I, this, this is how it was explained to me um, one time. This is long ago, so I can't remember who it was. But it was like, well, yeah, when we train the karate, we, we keep the gi tops on and the belt. But then when we train the Jeet Kune Do, we take the belts off and we take the karate tops off. So now we're in t-shirts, right? I left it alone. Like I would leave it alone even today, right? Because again, like I said, it's, look, this, I want to stress that this is not a broad based criticism of anybody's approach just because I don't know about it doesn't mean that it's not going on, right? I, I can talk about what I see, I can tell you what I think, I can give you my opinion, which is why I created the second show that we do on Fridays, the Jeet Kune Do Dialogues, because I want everybody in, in, in the martial art world, right, all the, the aficionados of Bruce Lee and Jeet Kune Do, to get as much knowledge and information as they can. I don't have all that knowledge and information. So I do the show as much as I do it for you, I do it for myself, for my own edification, right? Um, so as a matter of fact, so that, that'll be a good lead in and to finish up this broadcast. Um, on Friday, we will, the dialogue will be with Ron and uh, Jesse James Kosakowski of uh, Practical Self-Defense Training Center, right? So that will be um, two days from now around the same time, uh, 3 p.m., right? Um, I think we'll, we'll, we'll finish it up there uh, today. Guys, 
for real, on this one, because this is an important uh, topic, the stagnation, devolution, or evolution of, uh, of Jeet Kune Do. So, um, you know, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy the fact that you guys come on and, and you, you spend, you know, a few minutes with me during the live broadcast. But I really, really want anybody who, if you pick this up on the replay, right, make a comment, ask a question, give me the feedback on what, how it is that you, you feel and what it is that you think about this question, again, of Jeet Kune Do stagnating, devolving, evolving, or, or what have you, right? That's it for today, right? So, like and comment. I will uh, go through the replay and answer or re-comment myself. Check out the I Love uh, Jeet Kune Do uh, Quick Skill um, Series Volume 1, um, available for excuse me, immediate download at ilovejeetkundo.com. And I will see you, those of you who can check in, Friday at 3 p.m. on the Jeet Kune Do uh, Dialogues. Otherwise, next week, Wednesday, 3 p.m. again, and we'll do another episode of the uh, I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast. Everybody take care, enjoy the rest of your day.